For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, the angel told the shepherds, according to St. Luke the Evangelist, chapter 2, verse 11. The celebration of Christmas in itself is God's gift to all humanity. Christmas also as the event of the birth of God in the flesh as a human person as well is the gift of God to all humanity. Jesus is the main and the most important person of the event of Christmas. Jesus has been the most influential person in human history, in human life for the, for the last two millennia. The significance of Jesus does not lie only in what he taught. More so, it lies in who he was. Jesus showed emphatic persistence, unwavering defense in regard to declaring his divine identity. You know and you remember from the Holy Gospels that during his trials, the evangelists recorded the following. In one of the incidents, again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see, he added, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, and this is very important, what further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? He asked. And they all condemned him as deserving death. Mark chapter 14, verse 61, 64. The condemnation of Jesus to death as the Christ at his trial and the charges brought against him were not based upon any unlawful or wrong action on his part. The verdict to put Jesus to death was based upon his identity, who he was, and who he said he was. His unwavering confirmation that he was God, that what he was declaring time and time again during all the trials that he went through before his crucifixion. So his unwavering confirmation that he was God was the main cause of his death verdict. When Jesus was put to death, neither he stayed dead, nor did his teaching die. His inspiring teaching continues until today to impact 
the world, to impact those who like him and those who don't like him, those who agree with him and those who oppose him. Many noble daily practices, traditions, and customs that are taken for granted often can be traced in their origin to Jesus Christ. The source of peace, we talk about peace a lot. The word peace is among the most used frequently used vocabulary. The source of peace and peacemaking as a concept and practice were inspired by Jesus Christ. Jesus is the true and the original peacemaker. He is the one that terminated the enmity between man and God, healing the enmity of man against God, in turn, healed the enmity within mankind. I'll give you an example of how the enmity of man against God turned man against himself. You all remember the story when Adam first saw Eve, he said, this is beautiful. This is a flesh of my flesh, a bone of my bone. That was his reaction. After they sinned and they violated God's commandments and rebelled against God, God asked Adam, did you eat from the fruit that I forbade you? His answer was very characteristic. The woman you gave me made me do it. Okay? So, the woman, she is no longer one of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She's not part of me anymore. That's how the enmity against God brought the enmity within human being and turned us against our own self. The enmity, the root of enmity among individuals and nations is caused by the enmity of man against God. Jesus inspires the loving of others, even one's own enemy. The forgiveness of others for their wrongdoing is inspired by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ revealed truth as a holy person, not just as a mere concept. Jesus died for the revelation of the truth. Jesus is the martyr of truth. Jesus is the true rebel for the sake of truth. Jesus himself is the truth. He said that in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 16. Jesus is the real champion who defends the outcast. We hear, about, we hear a lot of people defending the outcast. They're not true, they're fake. Jesus is the original one. He is a true one. Jesus is the true fighter for the poor and the oppressed. Jesus stands boldly, very solidly against the religious and the, the political hypocrites. Jesus is the one that made it possible for mankind to call God Father. It is not a coincidence that the one prayer that calls God as Father was taught by Jesus Christ. Our Father who art in heaven, okay? That's very significant. The birth of Jesus reveals 
a very unique God. And without the birth of Jesus, we would not have come to know this unique God. Who is the God that Jesus revealed? The God that Jesus revealed has the most noble attributes. Here is some of them. God who was revealed by Jesus is a personable and accessible God. It's a God who loves his creation. That's why we call him Philanthropos. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 the God that was revealed by Jesus Christ, the worshippers of that God are not his slaves or his servants, but they are his children. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. This God is a unifying agent, even among enemies. The God that was revealed by Jesus Christ brought to us the surest revelation of the resurrection from the dead and the life eternal. And that happens through Jesus Christ. Now, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. Apostle Luke tells us about Apostle Paul when he was in Athens and he was talking about the resurrection 2,000 years ago in Athens, they mocked him. The concept of the resurrection, that truth was not there before Jesus Christ. But others said, we will hear from you again about this, the resurrection. Acts chapter 17, verse 32. Jesus himself is the life. The life itself. Jesus is the light that brings people back to life from dead. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. John 11, verse 25. Jesus is the inspiration of the fidelity and purity from carnal sins. I say to you, he said, that everyone who looks at the woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew 5, 28. Jesus is the source of charity. To give love for the sake of God, for his glory and by his power. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 42. Jesus in his capacity as God made himself equal to the humans of the lowest level of the society. Jesus made himself equal to the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the prisoner. He made all these people as important as himself. Truly I say to you, as you did it to the one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Matthew 25, verse 40. Christmas is the birth of a revolutionary divine king. A king that is so different from all kings and rulers before him and after him. This king does not sacrifice his subject for himself. This king dies for the love of his subjects. Jesus is a leader who, is, who in his humanity is like us, just like us in everything except he is sinless. Christmas is the birth of God who came to us to make us just like him divine by grace. The birth of Jesus Christ marks the start of the end 
of the tyranny of evil, sin, and darkness of all humans. Jesus came to us to heal our wounds caused by sin. Jesus was born to give us back our stolen, our stolen passports as citizens of heaven. Whatever we do for others in the term of forgiving, loving, sacrificing is a minute, is a minute gesture of the gratitude for the priceless gift of Christmas. I leave you with this, be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in a swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. Merry Christmas.